Hey guys, what is going on? Lego Man 1, 2, 3, you're back with another video, and welcome back to another tier listing making video, where today, in this episode, I'll be ranking my favourite Avatar The Last Airbender episodes from Season 1, Book 1. What I saw without further ado, let's get into it. Starting off, we have the boy in the iceberg. Now, I thought this was a perfect start to the series, because we get to see Sokka and Katara, we get to see, like, Aang in his avatar state coming out of the iceberg. Once Katara breaks it, we learn about Iroh and Zuko. So I thought that was a perfect start to the series. So I'm just going to put up straight in perfect. Then we have episode 2, The Avatar Returns. I really enjoyed this episode because he went to the water tribe village where Saka and Katara live because Zuko invaded it. So he was protecting everybody. And I really enjoyed how he just didn't sit back and like watch like, a sort of battle going, he actually stood, like, up for the village, and he took himself as a prisoner, so I thought that was really, like, a cool sort of idea, because he might be just a child, but he is the avatar, so I thought that was really interesting, so, once again, perfect, then we have the Southern Air Temple, now, this was a really sad episode, because we get to see Aang return back to his home, the Southern Air Temple, and, like, the whole sort of air temple is just destroyed, like, armor is everywhere, and then we see Aang go into his avatar state because his, like, good friend of his who goes by the name of Monk Gutsiato, or, like, got something along the lines like that. We see him, like, as his skeleton with the necklace he made for him while he was, like, still sort of just a regular kid. So that was a really emotional scene. But then, to tie it all up, Katara says, we're your family now. And I thought that was a really just perfect line. So I'm just going to put that in once again. Perfect. And then we have the Warriors of Kyoshi. Now, I really enjoyed this episode because seeing, like, women as, like, warriors is just a really cool idea. And, like, with their whole sort of armor they wear, their makeup. And I thought that was really interesting. And then I like, well, I didn't like, but I thought it kind of worked, like, how Saka was being all sort of sexist about it. So I, I kind of like that part of it. And then, like, the whole village, I thought that was really cool. And then, like, how the village gets raided and all that and Sokka and Suki have this little moment and then Sokka like getting dressed up in the makeup and the armor was a pretty cool idea so I possibly put that in amazing because I kind of didn't like the idea of like Sokka being sexist uh, sexist I kind of wish they maybe turn that down a little bit then we have the king of Imashu and then the episode this is the first episode where we got to see the Cabbage Man, I really enjoyed that guy, like, him saying, my cabbages, I thought that was really cool, and then seeing Aang's, like, flashbacks with his friend Boomy was just a really emotional scene, because we see them, but then we learn that the King of Amashu is actually Boomy, and he's, like, probably, like, say, 100, or maybe something like that, and then Aang is still, like, a 12-year-old kid, or, like, 10, I believe, so that was a really emotional scene, because, like, his childhood friend is now, like, an adult, and he's still a kid, but I really did like how the sort of challenges he had to face and all that in this episode, so possibly maybe give that first position in Amazing. Then we have Imprisonment. Now, I thought this was a cool episode because, like, the Earthbenders who could Earthbend were stuck on this sort of plant in the middle of the ocean where they couldn't use any Earth because the whole sort of prison was made out of metal and all that, so I thought that was really cool. And then Katara actually had a plan to go to that place and actually set them free. So I really liked that and her sort of speech to get them and all ready to fight. So I thought that was really cool. So possibly maybe put that in hmm, maybe third position in Amazing. Then we have the Spirit World Winter's Soulless Part 1. Now I thought this was really cool because this is the first time we got to see Aang in sort of this sort of spirit world, and like this panda being this sort of crazy spirit, like it could shoot beans out of her mouth, which was really interesting. I also thought the story for this was really cool, so possibly maybe third position in Amazing. Then we have our Avatar Roku Winter Solace Part 2. Now, I really did enjoy the backstory for Avatar Roku, I thought it was really cool, and like the whole sort of temple on the fire sort of. The fire sort of area was really interesting, so I thought that was really cool. And I like the whole Avatar Roku, I thought he's a really nice character. So possibly, maybe give it hmm, second last position in Amazing. Yeah, I think that's a good position. 
Then we have the water bending scroll. Now I thought this was a cool season because we get to see Katara actually steal a scroll to like learn water bending. So she's very passionate and she really wants to learn water bending, which I think is really nice for her as a character. But then we also meet pirates. I think it's an okay idea, but I kind of wish we maybe didn't get to pirates because they were sometimes annoying. They were like a band of just random sort of people with different skills. I guess that's what pirates are. But I did like the whole sort of Katara thing with the water bending scroll and teaching Aang because she did have a little bit of training. So I did like that. So possibly maybe last position in Amazing. Then we have Jet. Now I thought this was a really cool episode because we get to see a character who's actually fighting to stop the Fire Nation but in the wrong way. An, an example of this is that he's going to flood a whole sort of village to like kill all the firebenders but that is pretty dangerous because he's going to kill innocent people. I do like his motivation to actually do that because he did lose his parents at a young age but I just wish like he had a redemption almost similar to Suko, like that sort of idea but he did kind of turn around in the I believe season 2, like the couple of the last episodes because he was brainwashed, but I do wish he had a bit more of a redemption. But I did like like the whole sort of his group, like the freedom fighters living in the trees, almost like Robin Hood, so I thought that was really cool. So possibly maybe give, and I also liked how this was Katara's like love issues firstly, so I thought that was really interesting. Then we have the Great Divide. Now I really thought this episode was okay because I liked how Aang stood up as a leader like telling the different groups to like stick together and all that so I thought that was really cool and like he was trying to stop the different sort of arguments with each of the sort of groups so I thought that was really cool as Aang stepping up as like the sort of bigger person and being the avatar who he has to be so I thought that was really cool but apart from that I didn't like the whole sort of two teams arguing with each other and bickering but then I also like the story he did tell because the story was really interesting how the two sort of groups hated each other. But then Aang told it like as two babies were doing this and then like the two groups believed him. But I kind of wish there was maybe a, a bit of argument on that because Aang told a story and they just went straight with it. So I kind of wish they maybe disagreed with him just a little bit. But I did enjoy the episode so possibly maybe second last position in Amazing. Then we have the storm. Now I thought this was a really emotional scene or, or episode because we get to see two sides of the story. We get to see Suko and we get to see Aang. So Aang's story is that he ran away because he didn't want the responsibility of being the Avatar. So I thought that was a really cool sort of scene because he didn't want the responsibility to be an Avatar and like his friends didn't want to hang out with him because he had that sort of responsibility of being the Avatar, which I thought was really emotional because he doesn't have any sort of friends at sort of his age level as being the Avatar because he's hanging out with like a bunch of sort of old people, so he can't really hang out with his own age. And then the other side of the story is Suko, like how he got his scar, being banished. So I thought that was really emotional, so possibly maybe like first position in Perth because I think it's a really nice backstory for both Aang and Suko. Then we have the Blue Spirit. Now I thought this was really interesting seeing someone to actually rescue the Avatar which is the Blue Spirit. At first I was just like it's just probably going to be a random person but then when we get to see that it is Suko, I was like wait what? Almost like the same reaction Aang had like all surprised and shocked that it was actually Suko, who was saving him after he was trying to kill him in the other episodes or like capture him so I thought that was really interesting and I like how he Aang does get captured from General Zhao I believe his name is pronounced and like the Blue Spirit comes and rescues him and then they have this really nice fight together using teamwork so I thought that was really cool so possibly maybe fourth maybe fifth position in Amazing then we have the Fortune Teller now, I thought this was an okay episode, but I'm not going to put it in okay. I did like the whole sort of fortune telling thing, how we got to have sort of fore foreshadowing on who Katara was going to get into a relationship with. And then, like, the whole volcano thing where Aang used his airbending and 
a bit of water bending to actually stop the lava. I kind of didn't like the fortune teller though because everyone believed her because of her like fortunes from looking at the clouds and all that. So it was kind of strange how that did happen. I kind of wish there was maybe like a couple of people who thought, yeah, this person's like a sort of a joke and don't actually believe her. Sort of those people what are biased to that sort of thing, but there actually wasn't so possibly maybe give last position no, maybe first position in great. Then we have the Bato of the Water Tribe. I thought this episode was really cool because we got to see Saka and Katara's dad's friends. So I thought that was really cool. And they were going to go on this sort of trip with him to actually see their dad. So I thought that was a cool sort of scene. And then I also really liked the character we got introduced to because she had this sort of mole creature thing, you're not 100% sure on what it is, but it can actually track your scent, like if you have something and you sniff it, and the animal sniffs it, it can actually track you from like, your smell and all that, so I thought that was really interesting, and I really did enjoy this episode as like, the story, so possibly, maybe, second last position in Amazing, because I thought like how Aang sort of crushed up a piece of paper he got, to actually have this sort of letter, I believe it was, to like, Suko and Katara from their dad. He crushed it up because he didn't want to lose Saka and Katara as like a family. So I thought that was a really cool scene because he had lost all his family from the Southern Air Temple and he got a new family, Saka and Suko, and he doesn't want to lose them. So I thought that was really cool. Then we have the deserters, and this was when Aang had firebending and he used it sort of as destruction, at first he was a little sort of cocky with it, he was doing a bunch of tricks with it, but then he accidentally burnt Katara, and he didn't want to ever use firebending again, which I think is a reasonable idea, because I liked how he didn't want to hurt other people with firebending, so he wanted to stop it completely, which I think is definitely cool, and then like how Katara used her waterbending healing was really cool, I liked seeing that, and she does continually use it throughout the different seasons, so possibly maybe give that, maybe like, hmm, maybe, maybe there, maybe fourth position, fourth last position in Amazing, because I like how he did learn a lesson from actually using fire as destruction, so I thought that was really cool, then we have the Northern Air Temple. Now I thought this was an okay episode because we get to see sort of different, not tribes, but like different groups of people. I believe they're earthbenders and they actually find this, this Northern Air Temple and they actually transform it into this sort of, sort of futuristic air temple where they have like elevators and different moving things. So I really did like that idea, like seeing sort of a basic air temple then become bind into some sort of like futuristic air temple with like different machines so that was pretty cool i also liked how ang he was sort of a bit angry at like them changing the northern air temple and i would be too because like if you're so used to this sort of thing with the different air temples and like you like sort of tradition and all that i really did like how ang did that and then they discovered a really dark secret that the son of i've actually forgotten his name his, his name is not jet yeah, I've forgotten his name, so sorry about that. But he was actually working for the Fire Nation, creating the different machines and all that. So I thought that was really cool. And then also this really nice battle on the Air Temple where, like, they were using the air balloons and all that. And I thought that was really interesting. Like, seeing a battle with an Air Temple because the Fire Nation can't really access an Air Temple. So I thought that was a really nice battle. So possibly maybe give that maybe fourth position because I like how at the end... Aang actually saw that it wasn't, he shouldn't be angry about that because change is always going to happen no matter what. So I thought that was really cool. Then we have the water bending master. Now I thought this was a really interesting episode because we get to see Katara not be trained, but like see a water master bender. So I thought that was really cool. But at first he was like a little sort of sexist and all that and biased because he didn't want to like, train a woman because at the I believe it's northern water tribe you're not allowed to actually have women who train to use water bending so I thought that was a sexist idea but I did like the idea of that because it actually has Katara like all motivated and the sort of passion that she wants to be trained so I thought that was really cool 
But then eventually, Haku, no, not Haku, Grant, pa Paku decides to actually train Katara. So I thought that was really cool. And like they had this whole sort of battle and Katara didn't want to give up. And then the necklace Katara does wear, it actually is from her grandma. And Paku does see it. And like he has this sort of sad backstory about he was going to actually marry Katara's grandma but then she left because she didn't like the traditions and all that in the southern water tribe so i thought that was really sad and we get to see the sort of dark and sad side of parku so for that i possibly maybe give it second position in amazing then we have the siege on the northern on on the north part one now i really did enjoy this we got to see the fire nation actually have the sort of passion and all that to actually invade the Northern Water Tribe, because they learned something that if they take out the water spirit, something will happen to the water of the waterbenders, like they can't use it anymore, so I thought that was a really cool idea, and like, General Zhao was actually going to achieve that, so I thought that was really cool, and then we get to see Princess Yule, like, she has a love interest in Zuko, no, not Zuko, Saka, but she actually can't marry him because from the traditions in the Northern Water Tribe, she actually has already been asked to get married. So I thought that was quite sad, but then Saka does keep trying, which I think is really nice. So possibly give that maybe like first position in Amazing. Then we have the Siege on the North, on the North Part 2. Now I really did enjoy this. I thought it was really cool that Prince Zhao did actually, no not Prince, what's going on? General Zhao did slay the moon spirit but at a cost because the sun did go well the moon did go red and like the waterbenders did lose their powers so i thought that was a really emotional sort of scene because we get to see like the moon just disappear and turn in to like not red but then it's just like pitch black so i thought that was really interesting but then also sad and then i also liked how like um what's his name Iroh, yeah, Iroh, he was, like, telling Prince, no, General Zhao not to do it, like, if you do this, this is also going to affect the water benders and then also, like, the whole other sort of different nations, so I thought that was really cool, and it definitely does show that Iroh is not on any side, because he's not doing it for bad, he doesn't want to kill the fish spirits or any sort of spirits, and he's also not doing it for good, because he's, like, in the middle, he doesn't want to have the whole world out of balance, so I thought that was really cool and inspiring from Iroh, and then I also like how in this we got to see a battle, I believe it was in this one, or it was in part one, we got to see a battle against Katara and Suko, so, no, yeah, Suko, so I thought that was a really cool and enjoyable battle, and then Aang does get captured by Suko while he's still in Avatar State, which I think is really interesting because, like, he's in Avatar State, so he has no idea what's going on because he's trying to talk to, I believe, the Dragon Spirit to actually, like, have help and guidance. But then at the end, the Avatar, which is Aang, turns into this pretty awesome, like, monster water creature thing. I have no idea how to explain it. But it just looks really cool. I love the shaping of it and the colors on it. And then he does like destroy all the, not destroy, but like he um, takes all the way the ships and all that from like the Avatar state. So I thought that was really cool and definitely a great ending. So for that, I'd possibly maybe give it second position in perfect. Quickly, I thought I would come back and do a couple of changes. So I might move the deserters into fourth position in amazing, no, fifth position in amazing, then I might move this one here, maybe in the last position in amazing, no, maybe first position in great, and then possibly maybe move that one down, and then I might move the siege on the north part one into perfect, and this will be my final result. Sorry if you guys did enjoy this episode as much as I did making it because I really did enjoy sharing my thoughts and opinions on the different episodes in Season 1, Book 1, Water of the Avatar The Last Airbender. I'll be definitely doing Book 2 and 3 in future episodes so definitely stay tuned for that.
But quickly before I end the video, I just want to thank you guys so much for all the support on the last team making episode it, because it really did mean a lot and that video did take quite a while to make and to see the support it just means a lot and it also means that it was well worth time spent because I really did enjoy making it and I know you guys definitely did enjoy watching it. I would love to hear your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below and I can never see you soon. Goodbye!